Hey everybody, welcome back, uh, and this is episode 55, yep. uh, our second to last one of the year, uh, so it's kind of exciting. Uh, we've had an exciting day weather-wise in Chicago, our first <laughs> snowfall of the year, significant, um, so it's going to be crazy, because uh, it's supposed to snow until later on tonight and then turn into rain, so um, yeah. it's going to be a disaster tomorrow, so I'm happy that um, we'll be home tomorrow. <laughs> We've already had to shovel snow, and we're going to have to shovel some more snow. Yeah, and uh, so that's kind of uh, interesting that it's been this late in the season to have our first snowfall, so um, kind of crazy. Uh, but as we got to this um, time of year, we were just kind of like thinking of just talking about how the year's been, looking forward, and things like that. Obviously, I know for sure, <laughs> like in January of last year, I'm like, this is going to be the best year ever because it, there were so many significant things happening. Um, it was our 25th wedding anniversary. Uh, that is true. We had a planned trip in April to Mexico that we obviously had to cancel. Our youngest daughter was graduating high school. All the things that go into that. Um, prom never happened. Uh, graduation never happened. She had a trip to France uh, that was scheduled in March, literally like right after the... Um, pandemic started yeah um, they were supposed to leave march 17th so like all these like, major things that were going to happen this year um did not happen <laughs> although that's not really right after the pandemic well started, yeah because in fact it started probably late in 2019 that's we just true. didn't know about it yeah um but yeah and obviously didn't know um how it, far it would spread and countries and all that stuff so uh yeah it's kind of not as expected um i think especially because it was like a new decade you just think like this is going to be awesome and this is going to be amazing and all of a sudden it's just like eek, everything got put the brakes on it yeah uh, <laughs> but despite that um i think you know um for our youngest at least proud of her the way she handled everything with what happened and how her senior year ended and how she started college um so kudos uh, to you claire if you watch this <laughs> i'm trying to yeah that's true yeah, I mean, it was really a bizarre year for anybody who was in school, but especially, I think, for high school seniors. That was probably the weirdest. I'm just kind of scrolling through things on my computer to figure out when we went to um, various concerts before everything <laughs> shut down. Um, because that was, you know, what we, we that was probably... That thing. Before, before all this happened, we were probably going to... You know, at least a couple of concerts over the course of every maybe three months or something like that. Yep. So, oh, well, here's one thing I just uh, found from um, January 24th. Claire won a major award. Yes, she did. Um, a writing um, contest. Well, it was an a art contest generally, but they had different categories, one of which was writing. And she won an award for, I guess, an essay that she wrote. It was sponsored by Walgreens. Um, the expressions challenge, and she was uh, she came in first she place. She came in first place. Yeah. So we had to go downtown to an award ceremony, and uh, where she had to get a, an award and get recognized for that. Uh, and that's funny because I actually remember on that day, there I don't think there was any snow, but it was raining that day. It was, yeah, it wasn't great weather. It was on a Friday, <laughs> mm -hmm. I think. So um, traffic was bad. Yes, it um, was. But um, super proud of Claire for that. Uh, and I think, well, did we see LP in, um... No, that was that not was this before? year. That was the okay, year before, that was yeah. before. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> we saw, that's what I was trying to figure out. We saw, uh, the last show we saw in early March, before the end of it, uh, before we were no longer able to, uh, do anything in public. Yeah. Was, um, we saw, uh, Raul Mello, who's the lead singer of the Mavericks, the main songwriter for the group. Uh, we saw him in a solo performance. It was really great. And the best part about that is where we were um, standing. So you can, um, some is standing, some is seated. And so we were standing towards the back by the exit door. And so when he did his halftime thing, he came right by us to leave. Well, and also when he came out, because there was an opening act. Um, and then after she performed, he came out. He came out right by us. And then 
when he took a little break, he went. And I'm not fast. shy about saying hi, trying to shake somebody's hand or something like that. So that was kind of fun. And actually, the um, opening act, the woman who opened, we ended up talking to her for a while. Um, um, Monica Rizzio. I yeah, think is her name. and she was amazing. So that was kind of fun. I always like when you get to um, meet talent. <laughs> we also in February we went to what we did not realize would be Clara's last spoken word showcase. Yes. Um, she was in the spoken word group at high, in high school, which was really amazing. Um, and this was her senior year. She'd been involved since she was um, a sophomore. She, mm -hmm. she participated in a poetry slam for the freshman when she was a freshman in high school. And she came in second, if I'm not yes. mistaken, in the poetry slam. And then the people who organized that encouraged her to join the uh, spoken word group uh, sophomore year. So she did it all sophomore, junior in senior year and there were three showcases each year so there was one last fall and then I mean the fall of 2019 and then February of 2020 and the third one was supposed to be in May of 2020. Yeah which is also super sad because it was the time to celebrate all the kids accomplishments and all the seniors who did so much so uh, and even like when we first did it when Claire was a sophomore, the seniors that were graduating and the things that they did, I was crying for those people and I didn't even know them. So I'm like, yeah. I, mean, I would have been a basket case. <laughs> so, so and another thing that we did, as I'm scrolling through and I'm seeing <laughs> pictures of, is um, we went to the New Star Restaurant, which yes, we is did. a legendary Chinese restaurant in this area that we haven't been to in ages. We hadn't been there in... Over 20 years, I want well, to say. I think, the I, I could be wrong. Had, I'm not well, sure you and it, I had ever gone together. That's true. We didn't talk about that. Because I think the last time I went there was with my brother John, and my brother John passed away in 1991. And my family, that would be like a huge thing if we got, I got takeout from there. It would be like the best day ever because we were like, can yeah, take out from New Star Restaurant. Um so that was kind of fun uh, that we got to revisit. And it, it looks exactly the same as when we were little. Uh, for those of you who don't know, David and I grew up about a mile apart from each other our whole lives before we met. So a lot of the things that places that I went to, he went to also, um, which is kind That's of fun. True. It was a little bit of an age difference. So we were not in high school together. That's okay. It's not that much. <laughs> um, did I, you ever go to the Ground Brown restaurant on North Avenue? Are you familiar yeah, with that well, I know, I, Yeah, I knew a, a lot of kids in high school worked there. Um, it was a crazy restaurant that was um, in near our town. And um, the only thing I remember about there is that they had um, baskets of peanuts uh, in the shell. And you could just open the peanuts and just throw the shell on the ground. <laughs> and they yep. didn't care. <laughs> yep. Although that sounds a lot like um, what was the place in Maywood on, um, I think it was also, I think it was on Lake Street, but it was on Maywood, um, the Comeback Inn. Oh yes, the Comeback Inn. The, with the famous Kodiak Burgers. Yes, the comeback, amazing burgers. They, they were great burgers and they had um, in one room, of the, it looked like a dungeon. It, it did, was like super this dark. Old, sort of medieval looking place and in one room they had the head of a, a deer on the, mounted on the wall and then, then in the adjoining room they had the rest of the deer uh, over the fireplace but they had a you know big open kitchen with uh, they did burgers on the grill and many years later after we, we would go there in high school all the time and we'd go there in college and wherever people were back many years later I'm working for a big big law firm uh, in the city and I did some employment litigation with a partner who um, was that was his area of specialty. In fact, he was, as it turns out, the brother of one of my law school professors. So I I had his brother That's so funny. for administrative <laughs> law, and then I worked with him at a firm called Jenner and Black, and we had to go visit a client. A lot of times, lawyers who do labor law or labor and employment, that sort of thing, will you know actually spend time you know visiting clients' facilities and whatnot. So we had to go visit a client. And on the way back, he said, we got to stop for lunch. And he and he wanted to go to the comeback in. It was and you were great. like, yes. And that was the last time I ever ate there. And now it's no longer, right? It's not, it is yeah. not there anymore. Um, one other thing that we did before the world came to an end um, <laughs> was also, this was in February. Um, I guess it was February 20th. Um, was we saw Robert Randolph and the family band. Yes. If you have any interest in good music at all. I don't, I don't care what your interest, what qual, kind of music you listen to. Robert Randolph is 
fantastic. So amazing. And the family band is truly it's family members family. from, yeah, cousins, brother, I think. Yeah, his, uncle. Sis, his sister, who's not necessarily a band member, came out and sang with them. Yeah. The best, my favorite thing, okay, when David gets tickets to uh, for us when we go to City Winery, we're always right by the stage. Right. I mean, like, literally, like... Literally right by the stage. Yeah, like, I could touch one of the performers pr pretty much. I could touch their feet because it's like we're obviously on the sitting on the floor and they're or sitting in chairs and they're up there. But the best part about um, that band is throughout the um, concert, um, people would switch instruments, you know? So occasionally there's right. a few songs and then all of a sudden the sister was singing, then she's playing the drums and the drummer gets the guitar and they just kind of yeah. like keep going around and it was like so awesome. They, um, he, Robert Randolph is a great guitar player. He primarily plays pedal steel guitar, electric pedal steel, and what you think of as a country in instrument, but he plays, it's more like blues. Yeah. Um, uh, but he's he's fantastic. And yeah, they all get up and they play. He plays drums, he plays bass, he plays keyboards. The keyboard player played the drums. You know, they, they will every so, so often. So insane. But they are great and they are, they are truly a family band. Um, but he's fantastic, and he's also quite a character on social media. He's from the New York area. I don't know if he's from New York City or, or near there, but he is a huge Knicks fan, and he will wax philosophical about <laughs> all New York sports, but especially the Knicks. All right. Um, that I didn't know. Yeah, but he's, he's just and he's just a good guy, and he's you know he's really cool. So it, we it looks like as I'm scrolling through here, I think we only actually went through to. Two concerts before the lockdown, because I think we that sounds right. we saw him on the twentieth of February or right around then, because I posted something about it, and then um, we saw uh, Raul Melo on I think it was March eighth, and, and then we had tickets to see something in the summertime. Well, um, we had a couple of things. We were going to see um, we were going to see Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes, a right. band that I've been a fan of since the late 70s. I first saw them as one of the opening acts for the Rolling Stones at Soldier Field in 1978. Um, they've always been great. They refer to John Lyon, Southside Johnny, not to be confused with John Lydon, better known as Johnny Rotten. Okay. John Lyon is Southside Johnny, of Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes. Anyway. Uh, they refer to him as the godfather of New Jersey soul. He's played with Bruce Springsteen. He's, you know, one of his original band members was Steve Van Zandt, who then was later in The Sopranos and played with Bruce for years. Still plays with Bruce. Um, so anyway. And another um, great that was in, That was in May, and then we, couldn't, we obviously yeah. couldn't go. And the, I think the um, thing I love also about that band is that they've been playing together for 40-some oh. years, and... They perform like it's the first time ever. That's how excited oh, yeah. they are, and that's the music is just so upbeat Big horn and fun section, and just yeah, so great. Sort of bluesy, soulful, mm -hmm. um, just just great. If you ever heard the song "The Fever," which actually Bruce Springsteen wrote, I think for Southside Johnny, that was the only song they ever had that was really approaching a hit. <laughs> Um, I like, I mean, they're big on the East Coast, but that was like the only song they had that was like a nationwide hit song. Um, but yeah, that, that one, um, they are, I'm just scrolling down. Raul Mello we saw on March 7th. I was wrong. Okay. March 7th. Um, yeah, they're just great. So <coughs> that was one that we had scheduled for sometime in early May. It was a sat, it was a Saturday night. It was also going to be at City Winery. Ne we'd never seen him at City Winery before. We saw him at a place called Space in Evanston, which is a really great venue. Super great venue. But the great, but you you can't get close to the stage like right. you can at City Winery generally. I mean, they they do have a small number of reserved tables near the stage, but it's mostly standing room only, which is fine, especially for a band that's yeah. you know real upbeat and all that. Um, and that's where we saw Raul Bello mm -hmm. as well at Space. Um, but we had tickets to see Southside Johnny at City Winery. That was going to be great because we we're going to be right up by the stage. Yeah. So that was on. A, it was scheduled for a Saturday night. One they obviously had to reschedule. They had rescheduled for a date in September. It was going to be a Tuesday night. Right, and we're like, who cares? You know, we'll still go. <laughs> right. Well, it's easy for us to get to. But then, then that got canceled mm -hmm. and has not been rescheduled. And then we also had tickets. Yes. 
for, I totally re just remember for this. election <laughs> night. Yeah. Now, this is ironic. Uh, well, I don't know if ironic is the word, but we had tickets to see a band that I was fan, you know, a fan of back in the 80s and 90s called the Hoodoo Gurus, who are a band from Australia. And they were touring. They, they, I, you know, it's one of these situations where sometimes these bands that were around for a long time, they kind of stop making music, and then they, you know, okay. reform, and they go back out on tour. So I don't know whether they've been together down in Australia performing in the meantime, but in any event, they were going on a world tour, and they were going to come to Chicago. They're going to be at City Winery on election night, and all I can think of is that's perfect. Yeah. It's, we don't have to pay any attention to it. We'll go to a concert. Maybe everything's over by the time the concert's over. Maybe it's not, but at least it's a great Huge distraction. Huge distraction. So needless to say, that got canceled, and that's not been rescheduled. But here's the ironic thing. So they're from Australia. Now, things in Australia are essentially back to normal. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they didn't have it as, COVID as bad as, as badly as we did. And they just, for whatever reason, you know, frankly, I think people were a bit more cooperative mm -hmm. um, and, you know, kind of Following the rules. followed the rules a little better. So now, you know, it's the holidays. Of course, it's summer in Australia because they're in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, they've got the great weather, so now they're having all these outdoor festivals and concerts and all this stuff yeah. while we're stuck inside. <laughs> but we miss the Hoodoo Gurus. Um, and actually, in place of that, that's when we did our first Instagram we Live. We did our uh, first Instagram night. Live, right. And the funny thing about the Raul Mal, we won't just talk about concerts, but the funny <laughs> thing about the Raul Mal show is, you know, he, he's, the Mavericks are mostly um, down in Nashville. That's where they do all their recording. That's where he lives. And um, he comes out. He played a Friday and Saturday night. And we were at the Saturday yes. night show. So he came out and he's like, I just can't believe all you people from Chicago are actually showing up to the concerts. Because he was thinking, you know, with COVID already here in the United States, that maybe some people wouldn't show up. He said, you guys are crazy in Chicago. You'll show up for anything. And at the time, I remember thinking, really? I mean, is it that big of a deal? He was not wrong. Though. Yes. <laughs> because within, you know, a very short period of time, everything shut down. Yeah. Because it was uh, right before the birthday, basically, um, in March. Right. Right. Well, and, and the, actually, and that's, that's true. Like, l literally the very last thing we did was go out for our anniversary, mm -hmm. on our anniversary, which is March 11th, yep. our 25th anniversary. And that that was, you know, that was on in the middle of the week. And by that weekend, everything had shut down. Yeah, and uh, the funny story about us going to that restaurant. I know what you're going to say. Yes. So we're, you know, we're celebrating our anniversary. Obviously, we had to cancel our trip. I think we hadn't canceled it yet, but I mean, it was eminent that we were not going to be able to go on our um, trip. And the, ta per the table behind us um, was the midwife who actually delivered all of our kids. Um, so it was so funny. So she's still in the area. So it was kind of funny that we right. ran into her on our anniversary. And we're like, yeah. We're yeah, she <laughs> said she was sitting at the table next to us. So we're kind of, kind of booths, and she was at the booth next to us. Yeah, yeah. too funny. Yeah. So we have a picture um, with Gail. So yeah, I mean, and I, th I think that's one of the things I miss a lot is um, obviously we've supported a lot of restaurants um, yeah. than the thing, but. Um, you and I especially got to go out a lot to places because usually our children did not want to come with us. Uh, <laughs> That's true. So it was kind of a nice, nice date night to like, you know, every Saturday night we would go somewhere for dinner and have some drinks and things like that. So I definitely miss um, doing that with you. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to get back to that at some point. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, and we still didn't really know where things were going. So, mm -hmm. so that was March 11th. By that Friday, um, our local village had issued a shutdown order that was supposed to last for two weeks, starting, I think, on Friday. Mm -hmm. um, so our daughter's high school was, uh, you know, closed. Uh, they weren't, and, and they never obviously reopened after that. But they, I had to bring my stuff home from work. <laughs> yeah. And what happened was our village announced it on that Friday, and then the city of Chicago, Jennifer's obviously working in the city, um, 
they announced that effective that Saturday then at like 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. or something like that, you know, they want to give people an opportunity to get last minute things done. And again, they were supposed to be like two week, you know, things. And then right after it, so it went from our village to the city of Chicago, and then the state issued their all their shutdown orders, and we that's where we've been ever since. Yeah. Um, so what we have, like you said, though, we have tried to support. We we've done a couple of things, you know, to try to support local organizations. We've definitely tried to support local restaurants, mm -hmm. ordering out as much as we can. Um, you know, because for the most part, that's the only way they can really survive. I mean, they were allowing restaurants to reopen for a period of time with limited capacity. Of course, over the summer, they had a lot of outdoor seating. Right. So that was uh, of some benefit to them. But, you know, it's difficult for a small business, like a restaurant, it's difficult to open up with limited capacity because you have a lot of costs involved in just keeping your doors open and the lights on and you're paying people. But if the capacity is limited, you're not bringing in the revenue. For some places, it was actually just better financially to just stick to carry out and pick up orders. I'm thinking of the restaurant that's right around the corner from us. And they opened a brand new restaurant right before. Right. The, it, it right was the beginning. opening weekend was the weekend of the shutdown. Yeah. Because they were going to have a big thing to do for St. Patrick's Day and everything. And uh, particularly at that corner, there's been several restaurants at that location. Mm -hmm. So um, another owner had been there for three or four years, decided to move on. Other people moved in and stuff like that. And... But their seating inside is super tiny, so it's not like they, even if 25% capacity, there would have been like five people. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they did have outdoors, mm -hmm. outdoor seating over the summer. So we've yeah. um, frequented them often um, throughout this pandemic. But yeah, it's just kind of crazy um, this year how um, just it didn't go as planned <laughs> no, uh, at, all. at all. Um and then we mentioned before, but if you are um, around, uh, which I'm sure you are, on uh, on Thursday for New Year's Eve, we're going to do an Instagram Live at 8 p.m. Central. Uh, so we'll be uh, toasting champagne, um, <laughs> doing whatever. Uh, so we hope you can join us for that. And then um, I think um, and that one we can kind of talk about, too, like um, going forward, like what we're going to do for right. we're at 2021. I'm not saying like a... Um, like a um, resolution per se, but just kind of like thinking about things that um, I think would be fun to do in 2021, if we can. If we can. <laughs> so before we go, what were the good things that happened this year? Um, well, I think um, we survived. We <laughs> survived, co that's co workers. <laughs> Yeah, as co-workers, <laughs> right, right. Um, it, was, it is kind of funny because when you think about like, you know, spouses that work together like 24 7 and then they you know, live together everything like that obviously after a while you could be like okay that's enough you know kind of thing um but it, for us it ha it actually has been okay uh luckily we have the space so we're kind of that's a little true. bit separated and obviously when claire went to school i took over her bedroom as my office um so that's been good and i think one of the nice things, too, is that um, because of COVID, then our daughter was home pretty much all summer, which was nice before she went to, away to college. I'm sure she doesn't Not see nice it the same. Not nice for her. She would have rather uh, been with her friends. And yeah, because I figured if, if it was normal circumstances, she would have had a job. She would have been with friends and done something all the time. Um, and obviously, having our whole family together and our three adult kids at home has been uh, nice. Um, right. And the longest we've been together... <laughs> Because uh, then, obviously, as they get older, you know, on weekends and stuff like that, they're just out and about and um, doing their own thing as they should. So I think that is the brightest spot. And also our basement gym. Uh, our basement gym. <laughs> yeah. It's been a highlight for me. What about you? No, I, I think that's right. I mean, I, I obviously, there have been a lot of negative things. I still, um, you know, <laughs> I don't understand some of the things that are going on. Like, um, I was thinking about how in the spring... Um, the U of I basketball team was doing really well. They were obviously, although they hadn't made the announcements about the men's basketball tournament, they were obviously going to make the tournament. Um, and then, you know, all, like hockey and Major League Baseball and the NBA shut down and then college sports shut down. And it seemed to me that that was a very logical thing to do. And now here we are. <laughs> All these things are back. College football came back. The NFL came back. The NBA is back. Uh, NHL is coming back. Um, 
college basketball is gearing up. And I'm scratching my head thinking, boy, I don't know if any of this makes sense. And that's something that normally, you know, we would spend a lot of time, uh, you Mm -hmm. know, watching the Cubs in the summer, watching, you know, we're big hockey fans. I love the Blackhawks. Yep. Um, I just can't, I can't wrap my head around it. So, um, but I, you know. I actually just saw it on the um, TV before. I think it was the Patriots got a $250,000 fine for not following COVID um, procedures. So it's kind of like, come on. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And uh, I, I should be excited about, you know, Illinois basketball again. They're doing really well. They're ranked in the top 20. I think they're number 15 this week. They, for the most part, played well. Um, but I just can't. Oh, and, and by the way, the <laughs> technically, the Bears are still alive for the playoffs. They are. <laughs> it's kind of I haven't watched any Bears games this year. Uh, yeah, we really haven't. We've I not know. watched any of this. I when when the uh, when the NH when the NHL I can't even speak when the NHL came back and it was just playoffs and they were well it was it was sort of just playoffs. There was like a qualifying round and then the playoffs and they were all locked down and they were in the bubble. You know the NBA had the bubble and the WNBA had a bubble and and the NHL had a bubble. So when the Blackhawks were in that qualifying round, which they won and then mm-hmm. got blown out in the first round of the the first official round of the playoffs, I think you know we watched a little bit of that, and and I and I kind of felt like the NHL was handling it in the best possible way. Um, although there was a lot of controversy because nobody thought the Blackhawks deserved to be in the playoffs, but it is what it is. Yeah. But that was about it, you know. I, I couldn't really bring myself to watch baseball this year. Uh, I still, I think, you know, football, football especially, they're right on top of each other all the time. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, the NBA is back, but they're not doing this bubble thing because you know they're playing the regular season. That hockey is going to be weird because they realigned all the divisions again. To, I think to try to cut down on travel. But it's really, it's really going to be bizarre. Um, like teams that have never played well, each other. They put all the Canadian teams in one division, uh, so to to either eliminate or at least cut down on any cross border travel. All the e- Northeast teams are in one division, so you know the Bruins and the Penguins and the Rangers and the Islanders and and all that. They're all in one division. But then you know they couldn't really make it work so well with the rest of of the you know so. The Blackhawks are in the same division with Carolina, you know, so they are going to have to do some legit traveling, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, although I suppose the good thing is the Blackhawks and the Red Wings are back temporarily in the same division. So that's, you know, that was the old Western Conference rivalry. In the old, old days, the Blackhawks and the Wings were both yeah. in the Western Conference, and then they realigned it and the Wings went to the East. Anyway, whatever. So you've got St. Louis, if I'm not mistaken, St. Louis and Chicago um, and Minnesota and Dallas I th- and, and, and the Red Wings, I That's think, weird. are in the same division. Yeah. Well, that much kind of makes sense. But then they also have, like, the Blue Jackets, uh, from, you know, Columbus, and then Carolina. It's going to be a little bit weird. Definitely. But anyway, I don't know how I got off of that. <laughs> here, but it's, it's going to be it's gonna be hard to watch. So Yeah. We'll see what happens. Um, so thanks for joining us tonight um, on our little memory of uh, 2020, and um, we definitely hope you can join us. We will put something in our stories to remind people if they want to join us on Thursday. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you on Thursday. Have a great night, everybody. Bye. Bye.